Welcome in guys to episode 46 of the Advisor Odyssey podcast. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about email marketing. And ultimately, is it really worth it? How should you best be doing it? Is there a reason for it long term? We're going to dig into all those topics. So stay tuned. We've got a great episode coming your way. This is the Advisor Odyssey audio experience, where financial advisors, planners, insurance agents, and brokers will find fresh new ideas and perspectives around what it takes to launch, succeed, scale, and bulletproof their business. Here's the question that I get asked a lot. Hey, Daniel, I've never really done much or even any email marketing in the past. Is it actually worth it to do it? And I love when I get that question because it's one of the easiest answers for me. And the answer is always, yes, absolutely it is. See, this is, a, in general, email marketing is gonna fall under the digital marketing spectrum, which digital marketing is a major conversation topic, right? There's so many different things, so many different pieces of this puzzle. Uh, it's a massive umbrella. But email marketing in particular is also a, a very powerful, it's a very large in-depth topic that an advisor, or really ultimately any marketer can dig into. So I do believe that, yes, you should definitely be doing email marketing. Quite frankly, I, it might be debatably the single most important type of marketing you can be doing or could be doing. So this episode, we're going to dig into first and foremost, like three big reasons why uh, you need to be doing email marketing, at least why I believe you need to be doing it and why you need to be doing it well. So uh, first and foremost, the return on your investment with email marketing is like astronomically high. Okay, assuming it's successful, it is astronomically high. Yeah, uh, from an actual financial like ROI perspective, depending on how you run your practice, you know the the investments that you sell, that you offer, all of that. I mean, you could be looking at anything from 100 to 1, 200 to 1, 300 to 1. It's massive. Now, the money you're spending on it, though, in general, regardless of the ROI, it's always going to be pretty minimal. This is a quick disclaimer and a, and a warning, a cautionary tale here. For the advisors who, if they're staring down, you know, a marketing agency or uh, some, you know, program to sign up for and the main draw to it is email marketing and they want to charge you thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, and, I, and I, to me, I'd say anything greater than 2000 a month is a little excessive. Be very weary of that because you can easily make your own email marketing campaign, drip marketing campaign, you can also call it, for uh, fractions of the cost, if not entirely free. So just bear it, like keep that in mind, especially if you have a marketing director, don't be spending that money. I'm telling you, don't spend that money, it's not worth it, unless you know your marketing budget is just out the wazoo anyways. So. Jumping back in though, like to the main piece here, the the ROI that you're gonna be making on is gonna be astronomical, as I said. Some of the big reasons there is, number one, you, uh, from an actual like conversion perspective, you might send an email out to, you know, 10,000 people. You might get, you know, I'm making these numbers up, you might get 50 of them to open up the email in general. You might get two of them to even like fully read it and actually click whatever it is that you're offering or you know, basically enter into that additional lead funnel piece of it afterwards. But if just one of those people, one of those people sets an appointment with you, they might not even convert to becoming a client. But again, the math there, you send out 10,000 cold emails, you get, call it, we'll say freezing numbers, we'll say you get five appointments in general, just a first appointment. If you know that your conversion percentage, whenever someone sits down to meet with you is like even just 30%. Okay, we'll say four, you know, 33% is about the average 30 to 40. But if it's 30%, all you really are trying to do with your email campaigns is get in front of people for first appointment. And if it takes you 20,000 emails to get in front of 10 new cold prospects for first appointment, well, then even if you only convert just one of them, what is the cost to you to send out 20,000 emails and that's where you want to dig into That's why you don't want to get caught up in the money with all these different marketing companies. Like how much does it honestly cost you to send out in this example, 20,000 emails? You need to know your numbers here. Okay. And it will take some time to figure this out. That is another piece here. After you realize how like your email marketing is performing. So you do need to do it 
for at least three or four campaigns to get a feel on this. After you figure that out, the rest, I mean, after that, it just becomes a math problem. And if you, again, the hypothetical numbers I said, if you know that you can send out 10,000 emails and that'll collect you 10 first appointments and you'll convert at least one of them, it's a race to see how many emails you can send out, right? It's clockwork. So anyways, that is that is the first big reason is because of the ROI. The second reason why I feel that you need to be doing email marketing and why you should be focused on doing it well is because you are essentially providing these leads, these prospects, these people with a solution to any problem they might be having or any concern they might have. Okay, you don't, like most of the time, you're not gonna know if they have a problem, what their problem is, and they're, you're not gonna know that. But that's the purpose of proactively providing it, right? You know, the, the, the reality on this is, if I, if this morning I woke up and then all of a sudden my dishwasher's leaking, I haven't, I haven't reached out to anybody, I haven't, you know, called any companies, haven't Googled it yet. I just, I see it and I walk out the door and say, I'll deal with that later. If all of a sudden I get an email from some random, you know, uh, random plumbing company or, you know, a handyman, whatever, he's like offering a special on, you know, home appliances, hey, I'll fix your home appliances for half the price if we can get an appointment scheduled in the next month. Well, like, yes, it's totally random and there's no way to expect that to play in that, but I'm obviously going to, going to say, that's the one I want. <laughs> like, it's really just that, like that forefront and that that person, that handyman didn't know that I had the issue. He didn't know that I had a problem. He just sent out an email, but because his distribution list was so large, his, you know, he, he, he tossed the net to the ocean and I was one of the fish he got with it. So assuming that your email campaign is more value forward. Okay. And that's a key. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk, his book, jab, jab, jab hook. That's uh that's the concept that we want to continually follow with email marketing give, like give way more than you ask. Um, you can follow three to one cadence, two to one, four to one. I've seen some even go as high as five or six to one. But if you're just asking all the time, you'll fail. If you're giving, then asking and giving, then asking, you're, you're going to fail. But if you're following that framework of give, give and ask early on, you're not always going to know their true concerns. You're not going to know that what my problem is. You're not going to know what many people's problems are. But the reality is you'll never know what those problems are until you actually end up sitting down and meeting with them or until they engage with you, respond to you, et cetera. So that shouldn't be a hurdle. Daniel, I can't send, I don't, I don't want to send this email out because I don't know if these people have this problem. Who cares? You're never going to know. This is also why in your email marketing though, you should be having specific, like very specific topics. You should also be having some ge very general evergreen topics because you're going to want to mix those up here and there. Okay. The, uh, here's an example here. This is a general topic around marketing, but if they express interest in attending, you know, uh, like a, a presentation of yours, let's say it's a, a seminar or workshop or webinar or whatever. If you send that email out, someone clicks to register to attend your event that knowledge that you just gained there is that whatever that topic is matters to them. So now, you know, Sandy Sue clicks that link. So, you know, okay, Sandy Sue has some sort of interest in, let's say it's tax planning. She, she has some interest in tax, in, in tax planning. Now you then move Sandy Sue out of your general email blast and you put her into the more tax specific one. All right, now I'm gonna hit Sandy with tax mitigation strategies, tax loss harvesting, uh, you know, Roth IRA contributions, you know, uh, in a life insurance type tax efficiency stuff. Like now you start hitting her with those more specific. If she, the odds are that she's going to engage more because it's directly aligned with what she tended to click on. The disclaimer here also is if you just add someone to your email campaign and it's the first thing they click on, doesn't always mean that that's what they're interested in. Okay. Just do keep that in mind. But if someone's been in there for weeks, months, even years, and all of a sudden they click on social security, that's what matters to them. Okay. Um, with that knowledge though, you can become more value forward and more value specific with your approach. You're not going to have to worry about throwing darts in the dark. You can be a lot more specific and a lot more intentional. That intentionality 
uh, accompanied with constantly and continually providing value first, you're going to just increase your engagement results over the long term. So that email campaign that's netting you, you know, a 1% response will suddenly become 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. And again, with that same example that I mentioned earlier, 10,000 emails nets you one appointment. With higher engagement, those 10,000 emails might net you three appointments. So now we just increase everything over the long term. Over time, you're going to build up your email list. The emails that you're sending will continually be valuable, be different, but be valuable. And like whether you've got 500 people or 10,000 people on your email list, it's going to be fine because it's all a percentage based game. And the margins in the advisory business are very high, can be very high if you're successful. So just focus on like just send the emails out. Okay. You're, yes, you're still trying to nurture and you're trying to do business with as many people as possible. But uh, like if, if out of this entire podcast episode, there's one thing that you remember and take away, I hope that it's this. When people don't buy, there are many different reasons why. But your job is solely to make sure that you are in front of them and top of mind for them when the time comes for them and when they're ready to buy. It's that easy. That's Amazon's secret. It's how they, how they blew up, right? Like it's just be in front of them when the time is right. And that's also why email campaigns are so valuable. Make sure you guys, if you haven't yet, please take a minute and check out the link in the description here to subscribe to my weekly newsletter called The Weekly Voyage, where we are featuring, uh, we're highlighting an article that just came out the week prior. We're featuring the podcast episode if you haven't seen it yet. Plus, we're sharing a multiple of two, three, sometimes four brand new ideas that have not yet been shared that can only help you grow your business and build the practice of your dreams. Now, again, the link is in the description. It is called the Weekly Voyage Newsletter, and it is on LinkedIn and through LinkedIn's newsletter platform. Now, the third reason why you should be doing email marketing. Process-driven email marketing systems will increase the value of your business should you ever decide to sell it. Like this goes hand in hand with tracking the data. This is why it's so important that you track all of your marketing data. Your ROIs on your marketing funnels have a tangible, like it has a monetary value should you ever go to sell your business. Now, some of you might be saying, I'm never gonna sell my business, so whatever. Like, that's fine. It's still going to be good information for you to know. But if you track your data and you have a process-driven email marketing system, the value of your business will substantially increase. Because when you, you know, you might sit down with that, you know, whether it's a, you know, a, an individual advisor or maybe it's a, you know, a third party company that's kind of helping manufacture the deal or, you know, kind of hold it together, that kind of thing. Or maybe you're just selling it to a, you know, a relative or family member. The email marketing sequence you do, if it's proving net results, and also it's not just a picture of your face and your business isn't your own name. That's another variable. But if you can show that track record of results and the exact formulas, the exact process, the exact systems that you've been using, that's tangible value and it can be passed along. Someone can take it and run with it easily. So here's the four things that you just want to be able to prove when it comes to the data tracking for the sake of emails. The first is you want to be able to prove how many people you actually have on your email list with uh, at least emails that don't bounce back on deliverable. They don't have to be open, they don't have to check them, but you have to be able to prove how many people have actual legitimate emails on your email list. The second is you have to be able to prove on average how many appointments per month you're setting specifically from your email campaigns. Even if that's one appointment per month, you have to be able to prove that. The third thing that you need to be able to prove through the data tracking is your sales funnel progression rates. What I mean by that is if you continually send, like if they're still in an email campaign as like after you meet with them for the first time, which they should be, but if they're continually in an email campaign, you need to have the data and the tracking on that as well. Because what that'll look like, if you can go to a prospective buyer company and say, hey, when they enter into my, like when they set an appointment with me through my email campaign, if I put them into you know email campaign B, now that they're in my sales process, they have a 20% higher conversion rate than if I didn't put them in there. Now suddenly, again, that's just added value. That buyer wants that secondary email campaign too, because you can prove that it works. 
And obviously you want to know about where are they falling off? Where are you losing them? Uh, I did a whole podcast episode on where you're losing prospects, by the way. Uh, so be sure to listen to that as well. But then the fourth, the fourth element that you need to be able to prove through your data tracking is your raw closing percentage from specifically email appointment prospects. If they set an appointment with you via email, what is that closing rate? And I say closing, we can say conversion rate. If, you know, and this is true for any marketing funnel, right? If uh, you know someone attends your seminar and they meet, uh, they sit down to meet with you, you tend to close them at a 45% clip, right? Let's say your email marketing, it might be a 10% clip, okay? But you need to have that data. What is the actual raw closing rate? And so this actually, as I said, it becomes an increase in value to your business. Assuming that the process is duplicatable, which it should be, and the email marketing process stays in place after you leave the business, as in it's not like proprietary to you or you know, it's not a company that wouldn't be able to be used by your buyer. That's something that you can give away with the business. You can bake that into the price you're selling it for. And then you can frame it as, hey, you know, John Smith, buyer of my business, you can continually run this exact same thing. It's going to net you these results. I'll give you everything. To wrap up, guys, those are the three main reasons why I believe you should be doing email marketing and why it matters that you do it well. I'd recommend if you're not doing anything to start, I'd recommend if you're already doing it to make sure you like dig into two specific aspects of it. First and foremost, what is your actual results from it? The second is, do you have a defined like cadence and a sequence or is it sporadic? Is it just whenever you feel like it? Thank you guys for listening. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed the Advisor Odyssey audio experience. Connect with us on your favorite social media platforms at Advisor Odyssey. You can find our full-length educational videos to watch on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Check out all our articles and publications on medium.com forward slash Advisor Odyssey. The Advisor Odyssey podcast is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. The contents and opinions shared, expressed, or otherwise alluded to on the Advisor Odyssey podcast and audio experience are solely ideas and not to be depicted as tax, legal, or investment advice. Results from the use of these concepts may not be representative of the experience of all financial professionals and are no guarantee of future success. Your results may vary. The Advisor Odyssey and its affiliated members are not to be held liable or responsible for any lawful recourse or punishment invoked upon the individual or accompanying business partners or team members. Federal law, state law, and or insurance carrier requirements may prohibit or place limitations on any of the ideas and activities expressed. All advisors, planners, wholesalers, affiliated reps, and investment advisors should be aware of any limitations imposed by federal regulation, state regulation, insurance carriers, broker dealers, and registered investment advisors as applicable. Investment advisors are strongly encouraged to obtain pre-approval from the broker dealer, registered investment advisor, insurance company, or similar institution with which they may be affiliated.